Hello folks, so I'm doing it again. I'm going after a spot near that whole Seder region because there's so many dense clouds in that spot. You can just take your pick of cool areas to capture. And the area I'm capturing tonight is IC-13A. And um, I did this before um, on a bigger telescope and got in real close, but now I'm going to step back with the Ross and get a wider view of it. And uh, I already have three hours of HA. A lot of people are complaining to me. I mean, they're not complaining, but they're telling me that I don't need to capture as many hours as I have been with the Rasa. And that's, you know, old habits are hard to break. And I got to get used to that idea still, even though I've had this for a while. So I stopped after three hours of HA. Maybe I only needed two. I didn't check. And I've got around five hours of oxygen, although I went that high because a lot of it was captured under hazy skies, so I'm probably going to end up deleting a lot of that data. And uh, uh, now I'm going after sulfur, and uh, hopefully I can finish it tonight, and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, I'm going inside. Okay, so here's my surveillance. I only have one surveillance camera out right now since both scopes are are close together. I can fit them in, in just one camera. And it looks like they're both pointing in the, at the same object, but they're, they're close by, but it's not exactly the same. But since they are pointing um, near the same region of sky, at least, I thought it'd be interesting to compare the guiding on both of these. You can see bugs flying around. Because I had been complaining a lot that my EQ6R Pro mount hadn't been guiding well. I couldn't even get the tote RMS sometimes under 2.0, which is terrible. But, um, now let's just take a look now. Here's my CGX guiding at 0.94. Not great. I had actually seen it down in a 0.8 range earlier, but um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do anything to to mess with it. I, I can live with 0.92 right now. And let's take a look at my EQ6R Pro. Ooh, still one point. Two, two. That's not terribly good. What? Did I just lose my guide star? Uh, maybe, you know, I think we got some haze drifting in and out. I saw it on the radar. That wasn't good. I didn't like it. I would just flash right there. Um, so 1.22 and 9 point on my, on 1.24 on the EQ6R Pro and 0.94 on the CGX. Let's take a look at my, uh, my HFR. And my HFR, I'd been complaining that I couldn't get my HFR, how pinpoint the stars are, below 2. And right now, it looks like um, I only had one sub where it's over 2, and right now it's at 1.8 and hanging in there. So, um, what do you think? I think the stars are looking pretty pinpoint right now. This is at 100%. I can live with 1.8. Although I have seen it lower, but so the guiding is a little better than it's been. Not that great still. 1.25. If you guys have any suggestions, uh, I'm all ears. So let, let's see. So this is what ox. Uh, sul I'm on sulfur now. I'm sometimes hard to keep track. So I'm on the last legs. Hopefully I can finish up sulfur today. Uh, at least three hours of sulfur, that's a good sign that I can already see nebulosity in a single sub. So I'm liking that. And let me show you what my HA looked like for only three hours. That's uh, that's what HA looked like. Three hours of data. I always call this area the space shuttle because it looks like a, the top view of a space shuttle. And uh, it's just a dense area of nebulosity. I thought I'd zoom in on. I don't know if a lot of people have done this specific area. And this is, uh, that was three hours and this was two hours. I probably could have gotten away with two hours. There, let's... They're side by side. Three hours versus two. This is just, uh, I stacked them just really quick in Deep Sky Stacker, no other processing. Let's zoom in 100% there. Yeah. I probably could have gotten away with two, but that's okay. Three is fine. 
we'll see how this turns out, folks. Okay, well, thanks for watching, everyone, and I will see you later.